spin fast. These guys don't fool around. It is an electric car company. Everything here looks like it was transplanted from ancient Greece. <laughs> it does. It's incredible. This is Vin University, 70,000 cars a year. Vin residences, giant high rises, massive convention space, the largest water park in all of Vietnam. And we're part of a group of 200 people that were flown out here to check out everything Vin Fast, Vin Group, Vietnam, and I brought somebody that needs to get the most unique perspective on if this is a good EV car for a family. I brought the boss. I'm the boss? You're the boss. Oh, yes. We have yes. Leslie, she's my wife. This is the Vin Pearl Resort, one of many. And this resort is on an island you can only get to via boat. It looks like a submarine boat. Definitely one of the nicest resorts I've ever stayed at. Here's some of the snacks that we got. Welcome to Vin Pearl, oh, and then we have these. Is this soap from the spa or is this edible food? What's your guess? It looks like soap, but it seems like it should be food. It smells like food. It's nighttime of our first day and we're leaving the Vin Pearl Island Resort to get on a yacht. We're gonna go to one of the current seven wonders of the world, natural seven wonders of the world. It's kind of amazing. This is where we're gonna be having dinner tonight. I've never really been on a yacht before. This is the first time for me. And every table is set up perfectly. It's kind of interesting to see like the present best technology and then also the past and the old stuff that is still tried and true in here. There's giant ships going by like giant cargo ships and then there's like super old school looking fishing boats that are going by. There it is, one of the modern day seven wonders of the world. It is gorgeous. And I think it's a pretty good tie-in to what Vin Group is doing here with VinFast. In a lot of ways, they have renovated Vietnam. This country and the cities and the technology has really advanced over the last few years, and it's been really fun to come here and to see this. Vin Group has been around for a very long time, like 20 or 30 years, and it is one of the biggest conglomerates in all of Vietnam. So let me show you some of the things that Vin Group owns that is not the car company and then we're gonna take a ride in the car. So when I say Vin Group as a conglomerate owns a lot of things in Vietnam, this is one example. This is Vin University, an entire university with a massive ground here for all the people in Vietnam to come to. Primary schools for kids as they grow up, they have residences where people live. This is a giant wave pool that they have. They made it here for people to hang out and feel the wave. They have beaches that they brought in the sand from one of the top 20 beaches in all of the world. Build it up everywhere. The residences are close by, and I probably shouldn't be standing this close with these shoes on. Decent wave right there, coming around the corner. Here it comes, climbing up on the wall. Oh. Oh, no. I got out just in time. That was perfect. Those guys did it. <laughs> One of my biggest knocks on the Ford F-150 Lightning is that it looks just like all the other Ford F-150s that are on the road that are gas or electric. So if you're gonna make an electric car, you might as well make it sexy, make it look good. I think this is where the VF8 and VinFast in general has done a really good job. The front headlights, especially at nighttime, look really, really good as they come across. You have the V shape with the lights. In the back, this is how much room there is. And what do we got under here? Okay, so it will have a spare tire under there. Both of these seats can go down to create more room and you could possibly even sleep inside of that. And if we go around to the front of the car, there is a very small front trunk. Just this little area right here, right there, you can put a few things and maybe right here you could put something that's very thin. I'm not quite sure what you would put in a space that small. But nevertheless, there is a front trunk. The Mercedes vehicles, electric cars, have not had front trunks at all and it's been kind of a big negative on the EV space to not have a front trunk because people are just used to it. I mean, you shouldn't have an engine in the front. You have the motors on the wheels, you have the batteries underneath. 
Why don't you have a front trunk? Because electric cars are the future, you want to get an electric car that feels like the future, and I feel like it needs to look like the future. So it's okay for your neighbors to go, hey, that's a really cool car, what is that? Well, hey, it's a premium electric car that costs as much as a gas car, and it's fast and quick and all those other things. And I think VinFast has done a great job of making a car that just looks good. It is time for my test drive in the VF8. We're gonna take this red car right here, the VF8. I've got a couple GoPros set up. This car is not the, off the production line. It's about 90 to 95% to the production level. It's very similar to when I do a lot of reviews. We will hopefully at CES be able to get the full car that is the full production car that we can test out there. But for now, let's see what it drives like. Okay, and in our car today, we have the man. You are- My name is Joe. Joe, your yeah. name is Joe. Are you yeah. in sales, engineering? Yeah, I'm a sale and I'm a tech driver too. Okay, there we go. And then we've got the boss in the back. Here you go. Thank back you. Um, wait, hold on, honey. We need to open this up. It's super dark. You can't even see your face. Good call. Nice yeah. move. Look at that. Leslie coming with the comfort, getting the sun open, sun, sun shade open. Ooh, okay. It's got some get up and go already. So this is the VinFast VF8. They have fast in the name, so we need to test it out. How fast is it? We have come to a complete stop. This is a closed road. We can go 120 kilometers an hour. Here we go. VinFast VF8. Three, two, one. Blast off. Okay, there we go. That is an electric car. Oh, 50. I think we can go 70 mile per hour. There we go. All right, we hit max speed. Now we hit the brakes. <laughs> okay, that's one thing. If you haven't driven an electric car, you need to know they drive quick. All electric cars do. It does have a nice heads up display. You can see the miles per hour going up. I'm just gonna enjoy this ride in the jungle there. I know we are in Vietnam right now, but like there's a castle out in front of us. There's a big old Ferris wheel. It's like, it's like you're at Disneyland. A couple of things that I love about this vehicle. First of all, the air conditioning is really nice. It's really hot and humid here, but it has air cooled seats, not only in the front, but in the back, which is something that is incredible. I've owned a lot of Teslas and I think it was only a six month period where they had air cooled seats. They've now brought them back in some seats, definitely not the back seat. The other thing that I like about it is that it's not a size like a Model 3 Tesla where it's like this smaller electric car. Incredibly smart to come to market with a mid-size SUV and then the next one they're coming out with is more like a full-size SUV with the third row. It's called the VF9. Especially for somebody like me that's six foot three, I was a little concerned when a company from Vietnam was coming out with an electric car, maybe they wouldn't build them for taller people like me, but that's not an issue with this vehicle. I have tons of leg room, I have more to go, tons of headroom. There's a lot of natural light with the sunroof and then also you can cover it up with the shade. Some electric cars don't have a shade cover over the top and you just have the sun coming in. And as much as I love the sun, we live in a very sunny place and it would be nice sometimes to just like close off the sun. Do you concur with this assessment? Oh my gosh, assessment? it's my biggest pet peeve about the Tesla Model X. And there's no sun protection in it. So I wear a hat in the car. <laughs> the VF8 has two different battery packs, an 82 kilowatt and an 87 kilowatt. Now the range still hasn't been tested in America, so it could be more or less. For the 87 kilowatt battery pack, it gets around 292 miles range. And then the 82 kilowatt gets around 277 miles range. Now the VF9 on the other hand, which is the bigger one that'll be out later this year or basically early next year, has a 95 kilowatt battery and on the high side, 123 kilowatt battery. So I would imagine the range is gonna be well over 300 miles with the VF9, plus you've got a larger vehicle. So I'm excited to test drive the VF9. They have around 5,000 VF8s that they're gonna be loading onto a boat, sending to North America. It takes one month to send it across the ocean so they can fulfill their goal of delivering to North American customers by the end of the year. So there's a bunch of orders in Canada, in the US, and they say that the VF9, which is the bigger one, is about a month behind the VF8 as far as like getting produced, getting on a boat, and getting out. So that's why I think maybe Q1, you'll see the VF9s. And so that's the one I'm really excited about also. One of the best things about coming to these events is that there's so many YouTube creators. The majority of the people, I don't even know who they 
are. But there's always one or two that I'm like, oh my gosh, I watch that person's videos all the time and they're here, I have to meet them. This is one of them. We've got Shelby Church. Hello. She makes a ton of videos about, a lot of times about finance, about Airbnbs, yeah. but she's also made some good Tesla videos. So I don't even know, it's been a few years yeah. that I've been watching your content. So thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah. VFA, how was your ride? You you own a Tesla, first yes, of all, right? Yes. right? I really liked it. I like being up high that it's an SUV and it's a good price for an SUV too. They said it's a, about 40,000 okay. and that's with the battery subscription and the battery they don't have the price for yet, but it's probably around 15. I think all electric vehicles, they kind of drive the same. They're really fast, like instant when you yeah. step on the acceleration, super fun to drive. The zero to 60 speed was I think the same as like a Model 3, so really fast. And I thought the seats were really nice, like the leather and everything. It felt very luxurious inside and spacious, so I really liked it. I'm yeah, honestly, the seats were one of my favorite things. Yeah. And that is one of the biggest knocks on Tesla yeah, and is that their seats just aren't up to par. No. And so I don't know if you knew this because maybe you weren't sitting in the back, but there's air-cooled seats in the front seats and in the back seats. And I've never seen it in the back seats before in an electric car. Maybe it exists. You guys can let us know in the comments. And yes, it is very hot and sweaty out here, but we're at this giant building and I don't even know what it is. It's just this random building that looks like it's straight out of Europe. Like, look at this. The ceilings are super high and there's like artwork <laughs> up there that we probably can't put in the video. It's beautiful artwork, but um, they're not wearing very many clothes in their, in their thing up there. Oh, there's air conditioning in here. Where do they even get these floors? It's like marble floors. All right, this is the plan now. Look at this, they have somebody with an umbrella that goes and covers. See, look, even right here, umbrella. Thank you for the umbrella. Leslie's gonna drive now. We need to get her perspective. We didn't bring you all the way to Vietnam just to watch me drive a car. All right, Leslie. These buttons are kind of fun. There's the buttons, good call. It didn't even point this out. It makes me wanna do it here, but. Kind of fun that it's like these big old buttons. Oh. Wow, you're driving a little quick over I here. Look at you, speed it demon. It drives really well. It has like good control. And I really like the size of it. So if it's oh. 40. You can see the miles per hour right there. That's awesome, actually. There's a bit. Okay, slow down. Can we go fast? Go fast. Get up to 75. Okay. Ooh. It drives really well. I feel like I'm going extraordinarily fast. Oh. Okay, now start slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> Look it's how nervous fast. you are. It's a little too the kids, honey, the, the kids. kids. <laughs> One time we went 30 miles an hour in an electric car <laughs> Wait, and she was so like, stupid. the kids, the kids, honey, we gotta be careful. I thought we were gonna die. Oh my gosh, honey, I feel so dangerous right now. If we both die, the kids, honey, the kids. I love the cooling seats. <laughs> I hit a butterfly. Seat. As for the setup inside of this vehicle, it has a 15.6 inch screen, similar to what you see in the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3. There's no display right in front of the steering wheel, but what it does have, which I really, really like, is the heads up display, which we've seen in a lot of cars yeah. over the years. It's been a thing for a very long time. It goes around the corner really nicely. It feels similar to the Tesla, actually, in terms of control to me. Okay, thumbs up. Good job. I wasn't sure when they were giving me my massage oh. yesterday. She asked if it was okay, but I didn't know if thumbs up in like in this culture was appropriate. And I did the thumbs up and I thought, oh my gosh, I could have been really offensive just now. But he just gave me a thumbs up, we're good. That's good. It is good to know what things might be offensive in certain cultures. I probably offend a lot of people in a lot of things I do and I don't even know it. And like I said, there's a lot of people that I meet that um, I've been watching their channel for years, but then there's also cool influencers that we meet that I didn't even know existed and are awesome creators that have been doing it for years. So this is one. Well, I'm Denise. Stefan. And we are from Party I've been Boy. calling you Steven no, the whole no, time. I'm just joking. It's Stefan. No, no, it's Stephen. Steven. <laughs> is this? Steven. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Man, Steven. Steph Curry would be mad at me if I called him the wrong name. I've been calling him. I just should just call him Bruno Mars. He looks just like Bruno Mars. All right, tell us your Instagram we're page. We're from Party of Four, sometimes two. So normally we have our kids with us, so we're Party of Four. But this week we are sometimes two. <laughs> sometimes yeah. two. Definitely two. Did you try the um, air-cooled seats? No. What? There's air-cooled seats okay. in the front and the back and they're amazing. So you've heard my thoughts about the interior, about the ride quality, about the car in general, the size, but I kind of want to hear a couple things from the expert. You've seen a video a little while back that we went to Detroit, Michigan, and we saw Sandy Monroe and his incredible shop and how he takes apart cars and analyzes every little screw and bolt inside of it. 
but also comes away with like the best insights. So how can I pass up the opportunity to ask the man himself a couple of thoughts? So, all right, Sandy, what are some of your thoughts on maybe the build quality of the car or the ride of it? Let me talk about the ride first. I think that uh, this product is as good as anybody right now. They don't go as fast as a Tesla, but I don't really think that everybody needs to go like a rocket ship. Yeah. I like the interior. The seats are comfortable. Everything we've seen as far as gaps and whatnot all look good. I actually think that this is a winner and that's what's gonna come up when we do our videos. But I really think that the differentiator for this vehicle is going to be the infotainment system with all the different apps and whatnot. It's like having your cell phone and your computer um, at your fingertips continuously while you're driving. So that's the part that's gonna separate them from everybody else. But as far as I'm concerned, this is great. Awesome. I kind of got the same vibes. And the, one of the problems I had in the past is that I went to a lot of CES over the last six years. I would test drive a car from a company that a lot of times was from Asia that never came out to the market. And after the last few days of being here in Vietnam, that's the one big takeaway I have too, is that Vin Group is legit. They are a full on conglomerate that builds things very fast. Yes, but they it's not just a random car company that comes out of nowhere. You're right there. And uh, after going through their nine million square foot factory, <laughs> I can guarantee you that they are definitely serious about taking over markets and they've got the, um, They've got their plant going up here shortly in the United States. They're talking about a battery plant. These guys, I mean, you look at this architecture and you just get blown away. Everything here looks like it was uh, transplanted from ancient Greece. <laughs> it does. It's just incredible. It does. These guys don't fool around. So yeah. I, I think that you're right there. I think it's going to be a fabulous ride for, uh, uh, for VinFast in the United States. Okay, there we go, Sandy Monroe. Right now we're driving through the body shop of this place, the place where they take the battery pack and they put it together. And in this factory, they can make 100 full battery packs a day, like full modules that can go inside of a car. These are 21700 cells that are from Samsung. They individually test every one of the cells. They do IP67 water testing to make sure that no moisture gets inside of the battery pack because if you don't know this, water is bad for batteries. And then they put them together into 12 different pack modules that go into the entire battery system. So in this plant that we're in, they wouldn't let me film over there, but we got to see the entire process where they make the 12 packs, they put it together. They could just here in this Vietnam factory put together 70,000 cars a year, which is pretty good considering that they're putting a plant in North Carolina, in London, and I think in Germany, somewhere else around the world. Over here we have multiple different presses that are just down here. This machine is lifting them up and carrying them over to places that they need to be. This is a massive factory. It's a giant building that is just full of the presses for the different components of the vehicle. One important part of making cars, especially electric cars, is to get the metal pieces to be cars. And a big part of it is taking sheets of metal and turning it into the body, into the floor, into the different components of the vehicle. The bigger the presses and the more complex, the better you can have a lower number of pieces for the car. You don't wanna to have too many different options in the size of the vehicle because you have to make a press for every little part. It takes pieces and you don't wanna to have to go to a supplier to get parts for the cars. You wanna be able to do it in-house, quicker, cheaper, faster than anywhere else. Once these pieces are actually run through the press, you have humans out here that are analyzing and inspecting each one of the pieces to make sure that they are good enough to go on to the next line. This guy is analyzing the actual press and how it's working on those specific parts. A lot of wheels waiting to go on cars right there. A lot of guys waiting to put wheels on cars right there. So Leslie, how are you enjoying your buggy ride? I'm enjoying it very much. There's lots of steps. I appreciate all the rules and it's pretty cool. Like I can't believe they put all this together. They have so many people working on it in such a short amount of time. It's pretty yeah, incredible. I guess it's less than two years that it took them to build the electric car manufacturing process. Now they were making gas powered vehicles for a while, but they had to build this up from the ground up here in the swamp. And now they're producing a lot of cars. They should be sending thousands of them out in November via boat to North America so that people can get their first deliveries before the end of the year. So that'll be interesting to see how many they send over and how many people get them in America and Canada. Nice little date on the back of the buggy. This is 
the General Assembly building where they're putting together a lot of the metal parts before they send it to the actual body shop where they put everything together. This whole area is just robots. Just robots. It's technology. It's so expensive and so much money. And it reminds me of Elon Musk a couple of years when he was saying that he didn't get into the car business to make money because it is hard to make money in the car business. I hope that VinFast and a lot of the other manufacturers that are making electric cars are super successful. But it is a very expensive business to ramp up and to get moving on and to keep up with the technology and everything. I can't believe how many parts are in here. There's sparks flying in here. There's cars getting put together, welded together. I mean, this entire line that I'm looking at right here is the body going through and it's doing spot welding and the entire thing is automated. It honestly looks like a scene out of Transformers. Like, look at that. It's like some aliens came in here and they got all the arms and they froze. If I didn't say this before, I will say this video is sponsored by VinFast, although they didn't tell me what I could or couldn't say about the actual vehicle and the ride and those thoughts truly are my own but I go on a lot of these media trips where you go out and you see things and I've never seen anything like I've seen here with Vin Group and VinFast and of course the Vin Group wants us to see everything and see how good their company is but they did it by rolling out the red carpet and giving us like a trip of a lifetime but as Sandy Monroe said earlier in the video I do feel optimistic about VinFast VF8 and VF9 as a company, as cars and electric cars that are coming out on the market. And it does seem like they're going to have a future in North America. So if you are interested in seeing more, learning more about VinFast and about the VF8 or 9, I'll put some information in the link in the description. And I'm actually really excited to get the full production unit when it does come to North America to test it out, give you guys a full review of it. But for now, it is party time and I'm gonna wear this Hawaiian shirt. It looks okay like this if I put it too tight. If I button it up, it might be a little small for me. The music's already starting. They're testing everything out for when the lights go out. So anyway, thank you for watching. Party time, then fly all the way back to America. What are your thoughts on being on a car media trip? Um, it's amazing and I will go every time. You will go every time. Okay, well, we'll we'll depend we'll see how your car review goes. Oh, no. Don't base <laughs> it on that. I'm like good company. No. I'm great oh, company. I love having her around.